Um, today is, and, and today's assembly marks the 36th annual HK Douglas Cotton Memorial Lecture. Many of you are familiar with this. It's also known uh, more briefly as the Cotton Lecture. I think you have programs, am I right? Okay, so a lot of this, a lot of this information, including biographies of our two speakers, are in your programs. I, wanna, I do want to provide a little bit of information here. Um, the lecture was started in 1979 when Gilman was fortunate enough to receive a grant to fund this program and, and to endow the program to establish an annual lecture on career planning. And it was the wish of the donor, Mr. H.K. Co Douglas Cotton, to quote, instill in our students a better understanding and a keener interest in the world of business and economics. And, and what we've done over time, this stipulation has, has, has been interpreted a little bit more broadly to include all of the leading professions that might interest you as you move from school through college and into the working world, and they include law and sciences and business and industry. Mr. Cotton did not attend Gilman, um, but he was very closely associated with the school um, while seven grandsons were students here um, and we are very I should pause here we're very fortunate to have members of Mr. Cotton's family here um, you know many of them by the last name of Swindell and I'd love to stop just for a moment and thank them for being here and welcome welcome and some of them back to Gilman and some of them I guess to the front row uh, for this assembly so Swindell <laughs> great to have you here Thanks, thanks for joining us. So we have two alumni speakers today as part of the Cotton Lecture Program, and, uh, and they represent a really interesting mix of backgrounds and experiences. And what I'll do is introduce the first and then come back up and introduce the second. So to start off, it's my pleasure to introduce to many of you, reintroduce to some of you, Mr. Victor Abiumiri from the class of 2003. Victor Abiumiri, 03, is a portfolio analyst at Brown Advisory, a private investment firm here in Baltimore. He came to Gilman in the ninth grade and then after graduating, uh, moved on to the University of Notre Dame where he played football and excelled on the field and in the classroom. He graduated with a degree in finance in three and a half years from Notre Dame. Following college, Mr. Abby Amiri was selected in the second round of the 2007 NFL Draft by the Philadelphia Eagles, where he played five seasons as a defensive end. In his off-season <laughs> downtime, I didn't know you had off-season downtime until I was reading through this, Mr. Abby Amiri continued to expand his education by obtaining a certificate in business management and entrepreneurship from the University of Pennsylvania in 2009 and interning at an, in an investment banking firm, Park Lane in Los Angeles in 2011. He retired from the NFL in 2012 and then went on to obtain a master's degree in finance from Drexel University in 2013. Currently, Mr. Abby Amiri works as a portfolio, anal portfolio, excuse me, portfolio analyst at Brown Advisory and he works with the management team there to help manage the balance accounts of their private clients. He lives with his wife and son and in Baltimore. His wife, Andrea, is here. Please make her feel welcome as well. And serves as a member of the Gilman Alumni Board of Governors. So please join me in welcoming back to Gilman and back to the Alumni Auditorium, Victor Abbey Mary. How you doing? Man, I remember you just sit right in the back, back there, just kind of, you know, just chilling, man. Just chilling. <laughs> all right. Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for welcoming me back to campus today to talk about my experiences at Gilman and the impact that it's had in my life. I'm truly humbled to join the company of the distinguished Cotton Lecture speakers of years past, and I'll do my honor to I'll do my best to honor that tradition. When I was asked to speak this year, I laughed to myself because. I always regretted not giving a senior speech my senior year. It was my chance to candidly, to speak candidly in front of an open forum to the Gilman community that I thought I'd never get back. But instead, here I am, 13 years later, 
in front of you all. It's funny how life works. As I, as I begin to tell you about my journey, I recognize that every journey, everyone's journey is different. Some are blessed to have stable families with wealth and resources at their fingertips, while others experience poverty and hardship at a very early age. But no matter what your circumstances are, the inevitable truth about everyone's journey is a fact that they'll encounter adversity. What defines you as a person is how you respond to that adversity. That is your true character. We all have goals and aspirations in life, but what kind of person are you when things don't go according to plan? One of my favorite quotes comes from Mike, the great Mike Tyson, and it goes, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. <laughs> what kind of person are you when you get punched, when life punches you in the face. My early role models for handling adversity were my parents. They came to the United States from Nigeria in the late 1970s to create a better life for themselves and their eventual family. They grinded their way through school while working odd jobs to make ends meet. An important lesson they taught me was seeing adversity as opportunities instead of hardship. Instead of complaining about how difficult things were, they always talked about how blessed we were to be in a country where everyone has a chance to take destiny into their own hands and forge their own path. It's amazing how much a positive outlook can influence any situation. With this in mind, I went through elementary and middle school determined not to squander the opportunity that my parents provided by focusing on academics. Part of that focus probably came from the fear of that butt whooping I would get if I didn't and the, other, and the other part, from a genuine curiosity to learn. Looking back, I'm so grateful that they challenged me to always try my best and never settle for mediocrity. They had high expectations of me, but more importantly, they taught me to have high expectations of myself. When it was time to enter high school, I was coming into my own athletically. I've been about the same height since eighth grade, so needless to say, I was getting interest from local schools wanting me to enroll and play sports. Initially, my heart was set on following in my older brother's footsteps to Mount St. Joe's, but my parents convinced me to look at schools with a more rigorous academic curriculum. We found out about Gilman through a family friend who was a student here at the time and got involved with the BEST program, which some of you may know, to help with the admissions process and financial aid. Part of the process included taking an entrance exam to gauge where I stood academically. The exam took place on Gilman's campus the same day as the 1999 Gilman McDonough game. After taking the test, I went to the stands to join the festivities. I am witnessing how excited the crowd was for a high school game it was unlike anything I had ever seen before. After they clinched that undefeated season, I joined my friend at, a pro, at, a, at the post-game celebration and got to meet a lot of the players and coaches. I knew Gilman had a great academic reputation, but seeing how the team embraced each other as family was truly unique and what ultimately influenced my decision to enroll here. Now, I owe a special thanks to Coach Biff Poggi, who made it possible for me to attend this school. If it weren't for his love, mentorship, and financial assistance, I would not be sitting here in front of you today. When I entered ninth grade, I was a bit, it, was a bit of a, it was a bit of a culture shock. I didn't wear the same clothes as my classmates, and I, my family didn't drive the nice cars, or we didn't have any ex expensive vacation homes. What bridged the gap and helped, me as, helped my assimilation to the Gilman community was football. Even though there were noticeable dif differences off the field, on the field, we were like brothers striving for a common goal. There wasn't a difference between recruits, 13-year men, or anyone. We're part of the long gray line. We're all Gilman men built for others. In the classroom, I was challenged in a way that I never had been before. School always came pretty easy, but that changed really quick when I got here. I was surrounded by a ton of smart kids that were accustomed to the academic rigors uh, at this school. I learned so much from the great teachers here. Just caught up with Mr. Sawinski and Mr. Thornberry and a lot of those faces in the crowd. You know, it's, 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 it's great to come back and I just remember all the great things I learned from you all. 
whether it was perfecting that brushstroke in Mr. Connolly's art studio or, you know, honing my math skills in Donnie Rogers' math class, every facet of my intellectual, <laughs> every, fa every facet of my intellect was being worked and developed in the same passion that I have for sports. The academic foundation that my parents instilled was further cemented by the fundamentals I learned in the classroom here at Gilman. But everything wasn't perfect. Nothing ever is. There were those that would say, he doesn't belong here. He's one of Biff's guys. He's a recruit. Perhaps there are some folks in the audience that may be thinking that now. The naysayers will always be there. There will always be those who don't want you to see, succeed for whatever reason. Some may feel threatened, some jealous, or insecure about themselves, so they project it on others. I always try to take the high road in these situations, although it was difficult at times. Life is too short to be worried about what other people think of you. They, they, they distract you from achieving your best, and I was determined not to let that happen. To me, success on the football field was great, but it, it always was a means instead of an end. It was a way to get a free education at some of the best acad academic institutions in the country. I ultimately decided the best place for me to continue that journey was at the University of Notre Dame. Now, Notre Dame was very similar to Gilman when it came to uh, its commitment to excellence in both academics and athletics. I was well prepared for co college, for the college experience, and flourished on and off the field. After earning my degree and graduating in three and a half years, I was drafted in the second round to the Philadelphia Eagles of the 2007 draft. Life was great. I was 21 years old, just signed my rookie deal. The plan was to go in to the league, have double digit sacks a year, sign a major extension in free agency, and be set for life. That was the plan. Everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. My NFL career didn't quite pan out like I thought it would. The injury bug hit early and often. My rookie year was spent adjusting to the nuances of the NFL game, mostly on the bench, playing behind big money veterans. My second year, I broke my wrist early on, but was able to come back and, fin and contribute the second half of the season. In year three, I won a starting job in training camp uh, and played well through the first few games of the season. I even scored my first touchdown. That all ended when I caught a chop block to the knee and had to miss a couple games of the season to recover. I couldn't get healthy enough to regain a starting job, and I actually had to take injections to handle the pain and hobble through the rest of the season. I had surgery in the offseason to fix the issue, but it didn't heal in time for me to play in year four. By my fifth year, the local media and fans had labeled me as a bust, one of the worst draft picks in the Andy Reid era. I was heckled in public places by random people, even sometimes when I was with my family. No one knew how hard I trained to put myself in position to succeed. I went into training camp my fifth year in the best shape of my life, ready for redemption. On the third day of training camp, I tore my right Achilles tendon, never to play football again. This was the toughest, this was one of the toughest and lowest points in my life. Until then, I had a success at every level and it was accustomed to overcoming obstacles. Football had taken its physical toll on my body and for the first time in my life, I felt like I let everybody down. The words failure and disappointment started creeping into my mind. I spent so much time and effort trying to be the best football player that I could possibly be and it all came a screeching halt. If it weren't for my faith in God, and the support from my family and my friends, I'm not sure how I would have gotten through it. Football taught me a lot of great skills, gave me some awesome experiences, created some lifelong relationships with some really great people. But I used the physical gifts that I was blessed with to make it to the highest level of competition, but it, did, it didn't define who I was. How I'd respond in this moment in time and this adversity would re reveal the true Victor Abiyamiri. While recovering from surgery, I started strategizing about how to transition from the football world to the professional world. After talking with some trusted mentors and advisors, I decided that going back to school and getting my MBA would be the best way to bridge that gap. 
Even though the mental toughness, leadership traits, and discipline I learned from the football field were transferable skills, I knew that I had to go back to school to reinforce a lot of the fundamentals that were lost from a lack of professional business experience. I enrolled into this accelerated program at Drexel University to arm myself with the tools necessary to make that transition. I was always interested in the financial markets, but I also wanted to be in a position where I can use my relationship and collaborative skills. When I interviewed at some investment firms in the area, I found that people just wanted to talk about football because they rec recognized my last name. I felt like I wasn't being taken seriously as an investment professional. To me, it was more important to be valued for my intellect by my future employer rather than my accomplishments on the football field. When an opportunity to become a portfolio analyst became available at Brown Advisory, I thought a fresh start in Baltimore, close to my support system, was very appealing. It was a chance to help individuals and families invest their assets and achieve their financial goals. After interviewing and getting the sense of the culture and environment, I knew it was a great fit because it allowed me to learn while being an integral part of the investment team. After much prayer and reflection, my wife Andrea and I decided to uproot our family and move back to Baltimore. Andrea's been so supportive throughout this pro whole process and made it a lot of sacrifices for me along the way. She trusted my judgment that this city and this school will provide our son, Christian, with the best opportunities to grow academically and athletically as I did. All we can do is try to put him in the right situation to succeed, but it's his responsibility, just like all of yours, to take advantage of that opportunity when it presents itself. As I reflect on my journey and look back, I want to leave you with a few final thoughts and hope that you'll remember. Don't ever let anyone tell you you can't do something or put a label on you. Others don't de define us, it's we who define ourselves. Take destiny into your own hands to create the life that you want for yourself. Challenge yourself to be great and don't settle for me mediocrity. Your greatest strength comes from within and if you trust in your own resiliency and have a positive attitude, you'll be able to overcome any adversity that you encounter. Thank you and God bless.